Today on Score Golf, we talk to LPGA stars Stacey Lewis and Jennifer Kirby. Our first match play of the season, Ray Emery versus Corey Conacher. And a look at Canada's top-ranked amateur golfer, Brooke Henderson. This is Score Golf, the voice of Canadian golf. Score Golf is brought to you by TaylorMade, the number one driver in golf. Molson Canadian 67, the official beer of the PGA of Canada and the RBC Canadian Open. Tourism Prince Edward Island, come for the golf, stay for the party. Hello Canada and welcome to Score Golf and this week we are in Waterloo, Ontario at the Manulife Financial LPGA Classic, one of two LPGA Tour stops that come to Canada, the other one of course being the CP Canadian Women's Open which will take place in August. But this week it's all about Waterloo, Ontario and our show is filled with all sorts of features on women's golf and the top women's players in the world. In fact, our first feature is on the number one ranked player in the world as well as a player who's just getting her start. Stacy Lewis and Jennifer Kirby. They are at different ends in their careers, one on top of the world's ladder, the other just getting her feet on the rungs. But Stacy Lewis and Jennifer Kirby are both trying to accomplish the same thing, play the best possible golf they can on the world's toughest tour. Lewis, the number one ranked golfer in the world, and Kirby, the Canadian rookie with a stellar amateur record, have found a friendship on the LPGA Tour this year, having been brought together in several ways been cool this year. I've got three, four rookies that I've kind of been working with and um, it's fun to see things through their eyes. You know, you forget, you know, as a rookie, you know, learning golf courses, learning how to travel, learning, you know, just little things on the road. And, um, you know, Jennifer, you know, obviously you look at her record. She's got a great record, great player. Um, she's pretty quiet into herself, um, but I think she's, you know, once she gets more comfortable out here, comfortable being around all the other girls and traveling, you know, I think I think she's going to do pretty well, but because she's very talented. And um, But it's, again, it's just so fun to see things through their eyes again and little things I don't even think about anything anymore. You know, they're asking, you know, well, how do you know where the pins are going to be on the greens. I'm like, well, I've got the holes for the last few years. So um, it's just, it's fun. It's fun though, seeing things through their eyes again. It's definitely a little bit intimidating, I think, to learn how, you gotta learn golf courses, you gotta learn how to travel. You have to, you know, learn how to not play too many weeks in a row, how to manage your practice time, because now you're playing more golf than you've ever played before. So it's definitely a hard adjustment. And so that's why I like to help the kids out and, you know, give them a little bit of guidance. They have a rookie program this year, so I've got to spend a little bit of time with her and she's really nice. And um, I got to shadow her one time for a rookie hour when she was doing a pro-am. And she's just a model of consistency and she hits it very straight and she just goes about her business and gets it done. So far this year, Kirby is still trying to learn the ropes in her first year of playing for money. She's played well in spurts, but hasn't yet been able to put four rounds together. And in addition to trying to find her game, she's also trying to adjust to a new lifestyle. It's a, it's a different lifestyle, definitely, and it's kind of like a community, a traveling community out here. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of girls out here, and you could stay at the golf course all day, and you know, you think, oh, everyone's practicing, I need to be practicing. But if you just watch people individually, everyone has their own schedule and what works best for them, and it's just kind of finding your groove out here. Lewis, meanwhile, continues to roll along. Her victory at the ShopRite LPGA Classic was her second of the year and pushed her over a million dollars in earnings and tops on the tour. Still, the 29-year-old from Toledo, Ohio, isn't satisfied and won't be taking it easy anytime soon. Obviously, the last month or so has been really good. You know, I think if I don't get those the two wins the last couple of months, it becomes pretty frustrating. Um, but the way I've played, it's been so solid, so consistent, and just and easy. You know, I haven't had to really stress too much. And um, you know, being in those last few groups is where that's where I want to be every week. So just keep I just keep putting myself there, and you get more comfortable. You kind of learn how you learn your emotions. You learn how to handle things better, and I feel like that's what's shown these last few weeks. As of 2012, there were more than 2,300 golf courses in our nation, yet just 4% are honored with a spot in the top 100 ranking of Canada's best. In this top 100 segment, we take a look at how these courses broke down across provincial borders. 
Home to over 800 courses, Ontario not only holds the title of having the most tracks in Canada, but also holds over half the spots on the 2012 Top 100, including our ranking's top three positions. Since voting started in 1988, when just 15 courses were listed, the National Golf Club of Canada has claimed the number one spot 10 times, the most by any course. The Tom and George Fazio design provides an extreme challenge with superb conditioning. The second ranked course in 2012 was St. George's Golf and Country Club, followed by Hamilton Golf and Country Club at number three. Finishing fourth was Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge, located in Alberta. It's one of two courses that the province had in the top 10 of the 2012 ranking. The other was Fairmont Banff Springs, ranked seventh. Stanley Thompson, of course, was the designer of both. The province has over 300 courses and 12 of them made the cut to the prestigious list of Canada's best courses. As with Alberta, BC also had two courses in the top 10. The West Coast province had the second most courses on the 2012 ranking with 17. Capilano Golf and Country Club, located in West Vancouver, was ranked fifth best in the country in 2012. It's an artistic layout and takes full advantage of the gorgeous landscape on which it sits. Also located in BC is the 10th ranked Tobiano, as well as Sagebrush, which ranked 11. Ranked at number 12 was the Blue Course at Quebec's Royal Montreal Golf Club. It's the host of this year's RBC Canadian Open and is the top course in La Belle Provence. Nova Scotia was next with four courses on the 2012 list. Highlands Lynx held the sixth spot and was the highest ranked course within the Atlantic Canada province. PEI and Saskatchewan both had two courses on the top 100 list of 2012. PEI's top course was the Lynx at Crowbush Cove, ranked 16th, while Dakota Dunes of Saskatchewan held 60th spot, making it that province's best. With only 22 courses in Newfoundland and Labrador, Humber Valley Golf Club ranked 34th. New Brunswick also has one course in the 2012 Top 100. That's the Algonquin in St. Andrews by the Sea, which finished 95th in 2012. Manitoba had no courses on our 2012 list, as its lone course in 2010 slipped from its 98th spot. Will a Manitoba course resurface onto our Top 100 list this year? Will another province knock Ontario off its throne? Find out July 19th when we unveil our 2014 rankings right here on TSN. There are some great golf courses all across Canada. Which province do you think has the best? As always, it's your call. Tweet us using the hashtag SGTop100. Well, at the upcoming U.S. Women's Open, there is a notable entrant, an 11-year-old who qualified through the sectional qualifying. It's brought up the question of how young is too young to be playing in a major championship? Lucy Lee stunned the golf world last month by qualifying for the U.S. Women's Open. What made her spot in the field so extraordinary is that Lee is just 11 years old and a grade 6 student. It's raised the question of whether there should be an age limit for players in professional and major events, and how young is too young. Yeah, I mean, I think the U.S. Open's a kind of thing where if you qualify, whether at any age, it's an accomplishment. And, you know, I just, I just have to question, you know, why an 11-year-old is playing in a qualifier in general. You know, I just, I like to see kids be successful at every level. You know, play well at junior, play well at an amateur, and then come out and test your game. You know, I, I don't like to see kids just get beat up and beat up and beat up. And I do believe education is very important. Um, you know, even though I turned pro very young, you know, I still went to high school, I went to college. Everyone can live their life however they want to live it. If they want to turn pro at 12, go ahead. And I think just everyone's path is so individualistic, and you just can't put a set rule on everything. Thing. If she's uh, good enough to uh, qualify, then she should play, absolutely. Um, I'm just curious to see what the next record is going to be. One person who knows from first-hand experience about playing in the Open as a mere child is Morgan Pressel, who managed to qualify for the 2001 championship when she was just 12. Although she missed the cut, she gained lots of experience and sees Lee's spot in the field this year as an opportunity. It's amazing that an 11-year-old could qualify for the U.S. Open, but uh, you know, I did it as a 12-year-old and then Lexi did younger than I did, and now we've got another one. So I'm sure somewhere down the pipeline, maybe five or six years, there'll be another young girl qualify. But uh, it's, it's really, really cool that she's going to be there, and I hope she has a lot of fun, because uh, I certainly did when I was that young playing in the Open, and uh, I just wanted to 
enjoy the experience and take it all in because it, it, is, it, it is going to be very overwhelming. While Pressel began her career as a mere child, at the other end of the spectrum is Lori Kane, who is very definitely a late bloomer, not turning professional until she was 29. She has some advice for Lee and other kids looking at an early career. You know, going to school and going to college is important. Um, I'm not a parent, so I can't make the decision for those kids. Um, this tour is not going anywhere, uh, and if they wait a couple of years, it's only going to be better. Of course, there are a number of teenagers already making their mark on the world of golf, from 16-year-old amateur standout Brooke Henderson to two-time CP Canadian Women's Open champion Lydia Ko. So when it comes to an age limit, it seems that it's almost impossible to make a hard and fast rule. But you just have to wonder, how low can they go? Teeing up Team Canada, a look at the success of the National Golf Team Program. Brought to you by RBC, proud sponsor of the RBC Canadian Open and Amateur Golf in Canada. She was 12 years old when she was first recognized in the golf world, but now it seems like she's a veteran to the game. Brooke Anderson has already gained a wealth of experience on the amateur track despite being only 16 and has competed in the toughest tournaments in women's golf. The teen sensation already has played in her second LPGA Tour major earlier this year at the Kraft Nabisco Championship where she finished tied for 26th and second among amateurs. She attributes much of her success to the Team Canada national program. The Canadian national team is a great program. I have two swing coaches. I have a fitness trainer, a psychologist, a physiotherapist, nutritionist. So I'm well taken care of and it's a lot of fun just being with my teammates, traveling around, playing tournaments and playing at the highest level I can as an amateur. So it's really exciting and I owe a lot to Team Canada for the success that I've had. Some of her fondest memories have come from the places she's been able to see with the support of Team Canada and the people she's met worldwide during her journey. It's great. We get to travel a lot of places that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to travel to. I've been to Scotland, Colombia, Turkey, and hopefully this year to Japan for the World Amateur. And I have some of my best friends are on that team. I spend a lot of time with them all summer and learn a lot from them. She's also gained a confidence and comfort level that's not easily achieved at her age or with the pressure that comes from her immense talent. When I was 14 playing the Canadian Open, I was very nervous all week, but now it's a little better. I know a few more pros by name and they know me, which is pretty cool. The world's third ranked amateur shows no signs of slowing down. And although she's looking forward to the day when she makes the transition from amateur to pro, she has her sights playing on the collegiate level first. I'm so excited that I committed to the University of Florida. I've always been a huge Gator fan since I was eight years old. They have a cool name, Gators. <laughs> um, good golf team, and it's in the middle of Florida, so I can't complain too much. It's hard to believe that university is still a couple of years away for the 11th grader. Until then, she'll focus on playing tournaments and gaining more experience at the highest level possible. Fellow Canadian and well-established LPGA pro Lori Kane has been a good mentor for the young Henderson and has offered her opinion on school and her playing career. She's just a very confident young woman, um, very strong. I, and I also think she just thinks herself very clearly around the golf course. I certainly hope uh, for Brooke that she, she does decide to go to school for a couple of years. Um, I mean, my time at Acadia University was, is a far stretch from going to Florida State to play golf, but um, those are friends I made and will have the rest of my life, and that experience I think is very important, not only from a growing perspective, but also from you know, a collegiate golf perspective. Although it may still be a while until we see her on the ladies circuit full time, her enormous potential could make her a weekly LPGA force when she does arrive. When we return, Jeff O'Neill hosts our first match play of the year between Ray Emery and Corey Conacher. The tee-off season is brought to you by Molson 67. I'm Jeff O'Neill. We're here at Mississauga Country Club with Ray Emmy of the Philadelphia Flyers and Corey Conacher of the Buffalo Sabres for our first matchup in the tee-off series. You now, guys, you guys play in front of 20,000 people night in and night out. Are these cameras going to affect your golf shots? I'd say 100%. What do you think your handicaps are? Let's get some handicaps. Off camera, I'm about a 12, 13. Uh, on camera, I could be around 20, so we'll see how that works. Ray, what about yourself? I'd say I'm in there, 15, 18, something. 
What about the intimidation factor? I watched the game this year. Will this factor in in giving putts? Because Ray took a situation in his own hands against the Washington Capitals. Will this make you a little more generous giving putts? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm not, uh, I'm not a guy that drops a miss very much, and I've seen him fight, so it's uh, definitely inside 10 feet, even uh, maybe 15 feet, uh, I might just hand him over the, uh, the, the putt right there. And then. All right, we got a short par three here to start. Let's see what you guys have. Emery is up first, and despite a nice tee shot, some bad putting led to this bogey. The door is open for Conacher to win this hole. Uh-oh. Wow, tough shot. <laughs> that was definitely the wrong club, too. He has plenty of work left to do in order to have the hole. It's a pretty good shot. shot. Good shot, Corey. This putt is a must for Corey. After right. one, Emery and Conacher are all square. Guys, we're even after one, and now we've got a 390 yard par four, which would usually call for a three wood, six iron type play. But you guys are going straight to hockey player mentality, <laughs> and it's just grip it and rip it and hit the driver. That's it. Uh, as you can see, I'm a pretty scrambly player, and uh, let's hope this one stays in play and I can have a nice second shot. Ray, you have to feel like you let one go on the first hole. I did, yeah. You know, I had three whacks, never good, but uh, you know, hopefully I got the, the bad putting out of my system. All right, we got the drivers in hand. Let's see what they got. Both Emery and Conacher crushed their tee shots close to 300 yards oh, each. Nice. Let's see how they do on their second shots, though. I hate to tell you this, you've got 156 yards, and your playing competitor is 30 yards by you. So what's the mindset here hitting the shot? Uh, you know, just get it on the green, man. That's your only thought process? You know he's going to be aggressive. He's probably got a pitching wedge or a nine iron. I'm not too, I just got to worry about myself. All right, play your own game. That's it. Oh. Nice. That looks nice. That is right at it. Great play, Ray. Ray is on in two. Now Conacher needs a good shot. That looks good, Corey. Oh, great shot. Back to Ray now. Ray is pretty close and Corey gives it to him. But all he needs to do is drill this putt to go one up. Oh no. So close yet so far. We're still tied up going to the final hole. We're on the par 5-12, 519 yards, nicknamed the Big Chief. You guys both bomb it off the tee. But Jack Nicklaus blew the Canadian Open in 1965, being too aggressive, going for the green. Is that going to affect how you play the hole? Uh, well, a little bit. I think we're into the wind too, so that's going to be a factor. And uh, you just want you don't want to take too many chances. Ray, how are you going to approach this hole? Just get it center of the fairway, lay it up, and play it smart. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a three-shot hole for me, and uh, I'll just be happy to to stay in the fairway. All right, the big chief. Let's see what they got. Conacher's tee shot is just a little off the fairway. Emery, on the other hand, not so good. Now he's in the rough with a long way to go. I hate to bring up numbers here, but your playing partner is about 85 yards ahead of you off the tee. We're into the wind with a layup. What is your thought process right now? Uh, you know, just advance it down the fairway and uh, get What my club are you gonna hit? I got a three iron chasing it down the fairway here. Okay, a three iron in deep rough. Do you think that is the right play? Yeah, I, uh, this is pretty trusty for me, the three iron. All right, show it to me, show it to me. That nice. is a golf shot right there. You proved me wrong, Ray. I thought that was going 10 yards. Nice ball. That's a great golf shot, Corey. Thank you. Conacher lays it up nicely. 175 yards, you have a big advantage. This is possibly the match, this shot right here. Emery is back on the fairway and going for the green. Uh-oh, big trouble for Ray. Ray's in trouble, he's under a tree. You've got about 110 yards. The simple shot is sometimes the most difficult. All you're looking to do is get this on the green and two putt. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of trouble on this hole. There's water in front and bunker behind, so it's it, it's a tough shot. But you know, I'm just gonna try and put it in the middle of the green and hopefully, like you said, two putt. 
This is just like the 2-1 lead in hockey in the third period. Simple plays, keep it simple, nothing crazy, right? That's right, yeah. Just, uh, you know, dump the puck in and forecheck the D and... Uh... Traffic in front, shots to the net, all that stuff. Let's see what you got. Alrighty. All Conacher needs to do is hit the green. It's gotta go. Ooh. Just carried the front lip. Back to Ray now. Well, I'm stuck under a tree here. Corey's on the green, so it looks like I'm in pretty tough, but uh, hopefully I can punch it out of green and see what can happen. Tough shot. Can he make it? Uh, this spells doom for Emery. That's expected, Ray. Tough lie there, bud. Yeah, it is. Conacher is on the green and can seal the win with this putt. That should be enough to get it done, Cor. Yeah, I concede the match. It's over. Emery concedes. We have a champion, Corey Conacher. Ray, tough break there on the par five. A bit of an errant shot that cost you. Corey, here's your championship trophy. I have one of these at home, so congratulations. Thank you. You also Appreciate have a new SLDR driver from TaylorMade. And now, Ray, part of losing is you have to present the championship jacket. So. Now that is stylish right there. Good playing today, guys. Thank you. After the break, we'll wrap up another episode of Score Golf. Week Speaks brought to you by Bushnell the undisputed number one laser rangefinder in professional golf. Well, the LPGA Tour and the PGA Tour have certainly gone down different paths when you look at the winners on those two tours this year. On the LPGA Tour, nobody outside of the top 16 in the official world ranking had won a tournament leading into the Manulife Classic. On the PGA Tour, in fact, there's been a number of first-time winners, a whole slew of them. In fact, it seems like every week a new player steps up and grabs a championship. We have players like Patrick Reed who won once and now has gone on to win multiple times, but for the most part, they are making a name for themselves. They are establishing themselves. On the LPGA Tour, it's Stacey Lewis and Michelle Wee and Anna Nordquist, and they are the big names in women's golf and that's good to see because the fields aren't quite as deep on the LPGA Tour so there's probably only 50 or 40 players who have a legitimate shot to win week in and week out. For the LPGA Tour having their big names shine is great. They want to see their marquee players performing well late into Sunday afternoon and that's what's been the case this year on the LPGA Tour. On the PGA Tour they are so strong, they are so deep it doesn't really matter because almost every player out there is a known quantity in some way, shape or form. For the LPGA Tour and the PGA Tour, it's been a pretty good year. It's been a pretty good week for us out here in Waterloo, Ontario. We want to thank everybody out here for hosting us. And don't forget, if you want to follow all the results from the professional tours, go to scoregolf.com. And we'll see you next time right here on ScoreGolf TV. Clothing provided by Ashworth. All we do is golf.